Hello. Hello. Lord, let me know if you want me to bring you on. I think I can invite. Yay, okay. Hi, Sir Peter. I am just waiting for Laura to join me. Hopefully, this works. Oh, I can hear you. Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you? How are you? I'm good. I can see your face. I'm good. <laughs> so, yeah, so obviously. I know. I've been seeing your face. We've had a holiday. I know. I feel like I've got a, like, a nice colour at the moment, so I'm going to keep it going. <laughs> Enjoying the sunshine. So, Thanks. So the plan obviously today is to talk about all things mental health. So I've got a few questions that people have sent in, but obviously I know you just wanted to come on as part of DYB, Deep Yoga Beats, who are doing an amazing free week, um, trial of all good things. So yeah, I don't know, Laura, if you wanted to kind of say a bit about yourself or how you've been doing or just really anything, what you wanted to chat about. That's all right. Hello. Sorry. That's I'm right. like the worst at things like this. <laughs> now, I have, now I have that's it. Okay, so yeah, where do, where do you want to start? What do we do? You just shoot the questions? I don't know yet. I just wanted to, I suppose, really, just how are you? How have you been coping with just your mental health during this time? Is there any tips or techniques that you want to share with everyone? How are you finding it being at home? To be honest, I quite like it. I'm, yeah, I quite, I quite enjoy being at home. It's, it's given me some time to like reroute again because my life was so busy and in yeah. and out. You know how Samantha and I live, so I've actually been in my own home. Um, so it's been really nice. I've managed to like do my garden mm-hmm. and like reconnect back to my kitchen because before we were just eating and taking out and so yeah like to be honest with you I've had a really positive experience yeah aside from all the sort of world politics that's going on which actually I'm quite invested in as well yeah um I've kind of been dipping in and out of both yeah yeah it's amazing so and you said you've got a new skill so are we going to be seeing any of that at a later date or is that okay (laughs) Someone doing angel readings. So, yeah, yeah, really excited about that. I can't wait. That would be so exciting. Oh, okay, yeah, so I think I'm the same. kind of social conditioning stopping that one from progressing right now. So, we'll have to wait. Um, yeah, we'll have to wait. Okay. It says your signal's going in and out. So, I don't know. 
Ooh. There you are. <laughs> I don't know if it, it cut out or not, but yeah, so obviously you were just saying, obviously what the world is at the moment, that's kind of stopping things from continuing with that. I think. Technical difficulties. Can you still hear me, Laura? <laughs> Do you want me to let you go? Because I think Sam wanted to come in as well. Why can't... I don't know if anyone else can hear Laura, but I, all I can hear... I can't hear anything. I'm trying to lip read. Not too sure. I know I can't hear Laura either. I don't know whether... Laura, obviously I don't know if you can hear me. I'm going to cross you off because I think Sam wanted to come in just so we've got enough time because I know we've only got half an hour. So, yeah. Hopefully Laura <laughs> didn't take that personally. Hi, everyone. Um... So yeah, so obviously how Laura's coping with using a lot of the yoga and just kind of getting back into like what you're doing. Yeah, Sam, I know. So I know Sam wanted to join. So Sam, if you do want to join, then I think you can request it now. But I suppose just to really explain how I've been managing myself, Oh, no worries, Laura. Laura, I only cut you off because obviously I couldn't hear you um, and no one else could either. So for me, I think during this time managing my mental health, I've been doing a lot of yoga myself um, and I've been doing a lot of meditation and just really focusing on what I can. Obviously, it's a really, really difficult time what we're all going through. And I think it's just really listening to your needs so if you like need to just take time out then just take that time out hi lauren um i'm gonna see if i can bring sam all right i'm trying let's see i'm gonna see if that works with sam um oh hello that was really quick <laughs> i can hear, I can hear me. yeah i can hear you and i can see you can you see a big smile <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. I'm just hiding out the back of my house because otherwise you'll hear dogs and kids barking and That's... demanding snacks and drinks. <laughs> That's fine. So, yeah, you can hear us both. Um, so, honestly, as I said with Laura, obviously I just kind of checked in, just asking like how you are and how you've been managing your mental health um during the lockdown obviously maybe introduce yourself a little bit as well okay so hello everyone i'm samantha and i'm half of deep yoga beats um so i am a kids yoga teacher um and i will hopefully soon be qualified sound healer um and then i do all the other stuff like the posts and making stuff up you know <laughs> um so yeah that side of it so laura does all the lovely teaching and i do the other stuff um Perfect. so yeah so that's basically a bit about me um lockdown life for me to be honest has been really positive um obviously apart from obviously financially and yeah. obviously not having the studio around um but it's been like what Laura said, it's been quite nice actually getting stuff done indoors. So yeah. it's been a bit more of an organisation for me, to be honest. And it's helped with everything else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because where I was going in and out and everywhere, it's what it's really made me realise actually, you don't have to actually do as much as you think. Yeah. So, like, for, for example, kids' clubs, like, I would be such stressed about, like, oh, I've got to be here, I've got to be there, you've got to get them here, oh, they've got to be doing this. But really, a lot of it now, where 
don't work being indoors, you can actually do indoors, or there's other ways around it, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so it's been quite nice in that that sense. It's been, um, and definitely been in the kitchen way more. So I've been uh, baking, back to baking, which I, I used to do a lot of. So I've really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, and just c- cooking, really. So. I think it's, it's like. Been- Everyone not gone back to basics, but just kind of just taking a step back. Um, Yeah. I think I completely agree with you that kind of we go through life sometimes on like 100 miles an hour. And it's not like a bad thing to take a step back. And I suppose this has kind of proved that we can take a step back if we need it. Um, Yeah, for sure. And I think like, yeah, not feeling the pressure. I don't know about you, but I feel with so many things going on, sometimes you feel so much pressure on achieving loads of things um yeah but i think now yeah you can 100 percent. and obviously the um yeah like what you're doing in normal life what what we used to call normal life whatever there were so many expectations like you seem to be doing this or have you seen new so-and-so's doing this or have you seen who's doing this posted that and it was yeah. you get caught up in it so easy don't get me wrong i'm i'm still 100% fully caught up in Instagram yeah. but in a whole different way now like Definitely. the things I've been looking at the people I'm following now on Instagram through lockdown you uh, with everything going on people have connected to you more yeah. you, you, you put a, maybe a few olive branches you cut out before they would never pay attention to but now they've come around and have been like hey mm. like you know um, they're like oh okay like for me I'm being a vegan, that's one of my like life battles. You know, I don't try to go on about it because people have their views. But I think yeah. now a little more people are like, well, actually, you don't actually need as much more. And they're thinking about things slightly different, which is oh, no. great. I only have a real yeah. Well, it broke out slightly then, but I think. I can hear you. <laughs> I can still hear you. So yeah, I was just that kind of the more people are trying different things, like in terms of eating habits, like with veganism and stuff like that during lockdown. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And yoga, like so many more people now have messaged us and been like, Oh, like I'm really stressed or I can't sleep or We've had a lot of people like in stressful relationships with their partners. Like, um, we've had a lot of people reach out with us with, when they're not agreeing and stuff. And when you're stuck mm. indoors, it can be intense. So they've maybe tried a bit of yoga and it's helped, or they've done a meditation, or or they've just basically watched our stuff or some we've spoke about. They've followed, and then you just you might even see one meme and it changes your whole day. You know, definitely, and like. Um, I think obviously Michelle's saying that she agrees with you with the mums feeling pressure for the children to be doing all the clubs and yeah. stuff. So I suppose what is... Oh, don't... No, I was going to say, like, what's going on with the clubs? Is there kind of... Has that been able to slow down? Because I know some places are offering, like, clubs online, but obviously the travel probably takes so much time up. Yeah, well, mine, to be honest, uh, mine have not been doing anything. They've literally... Um, but we haven't done any of their clubs or anything like that. Um, and to be honest, we've done not a great deal of schoolwork. Um, we've just been doing stuff in, indoors and kind of finding our own way and stuff. And don't get me wrong, some days it's better than others. <laughs> but you, you just go with what what you're feeling as well. And I'd much prefer, like, for example, weather. Mm. Like, when this weather's like this, like, how can you not be outside enjoying it if you've got space to do it? Don't get me wrong, some people obviously can't, don't have that and they mm. can't go outside. But if you can, that's way more important. Our kids, think about it then. They've gone from being with all their friends at school mm. to now being indoors. Like, especially if you're an only child as well. Yeah. Or, or maybe you've got siblings they don't get on with. Yeah. Like, for me, I think if they're outside doing stuff, you know, even if it's like digging, getting messy, or whatever it is, and just like planning a paddling or whatever it is, mm. I think they're gonna it's gonna be way better on their mental health than it is me sitting down trying to scream and shout and trying to do some adding and taking. I'm not saying that they, they should do that as well, of course, mm. but I think it's everyone. 
everyone's got their own way of doing it and what you're doing isn't right and what I'm doing is wrong. It's what's right for you and that's what I think this time has made people realise, you mm. know. And that's the thing, I think that kind of you've got to look at what's right for you. Like even with the kids, like yeah. having those honest conversations with them kind of thinking about like what do you want to do you've got the luxury of being able to actually pick what you're doing in the day so and I suppose adapt really for what's going on oh I can't hear you yeah yeah oh the sick who's doing so well I did, but I could, I could still kind of hear you. Did you lose me? Kind of. Hello? <laughs> Hello, I can hear you, but I can't really see you. Oh, I can hear you now. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's going... Oh, yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yeah. I can still hear you, but I just can't see you. Oh, oh. that's probably a good thing. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, Definitely. And I I lost you after you said genres. just life skills kind of life skills I don't really know just doing what's right for them rather than going by the curriculum but yeah oh I don't know um I was gonna say I've got like it's literally the time's gone I've got oh, sorry. no 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 I was gonna <laughs> Did you? Uh, I don't know if you wanted to stay with me because I've got a few questions that I was going to answer. I don't know if you want to stay. Yeah, if you want to, I'll, I'll go off and then your connection will be better anyway. Do you reckon? Anything else? Find any closing points you want to say? <laughs> um, no, guys. Just if you've got, join our class all this week. It's obviously free all this week, so just come and give it a go. Um, if you've got any questions or any suggestions on the app. As little or as small, big, whatever it is, just always message us because if it, even if it seems really crazy, you just message us because if you get it off your mind, it'll make you feel better. So just slide into our DMs and one of us will answer you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm looking for. I've, I think I've booked into a few glasses this week. So yeah, I'd recommend everyone go and check it out that they've got. And we've got some really good teachers on board. Um, so they've either been pupils at the studio and they've come through and so they're now going to be teaching with us so that's amazing. we're keeping it all kind of as close in-house as we can yeah cool so, yeah. thank you so much for joining me thanks guys that's all right i'll speak to you soon <laughs> all right i don't i think we'll have to kick you out i think right so I've got a few questions. So someone asked, oh, I think I can show you that in there. So how can anxiety manifest itself without you consciously knowing? So that's a really, really good question. And that links into one of the other questions that I was going to talk about. So 
with anxiety there are so many ways that anxiety can start obviously sometimes with loads of different mental health conditions it's actually to do with the chemicals in your brain so sometimes just the chemicals can just dip like that so that's to do with loads of different disorders so it's nothing really that you've done um, it's just something that goes on in your brain so if that happens and that can just increase your anxiety for whatever reason and then sometimes again with anxiety we can have if our parents are really anxious sometimes we can adopt some of the the behaviors or the thought patterns that they have shown us because we look up to our parents or to our caregivers and, and we adopt these things and sometimes we don't always know that they aren't kind of a way that's beneficial for us so with both of those things the anxiety can really come out as you said like without you knowing consciously so I that would be kind of one of the main things and sometimes that with anxiety you get those real physical reactions so sometimes you really get um like when I get anxious I get really really strong butterflies or well, Laura's saying it I can't even pronounce that word, epigenetics. <laughs> I will leave that for Laura to talk about because I don't know what that is or how to pronounce it. Um, but yeah, Laura, if you want to kind of type more in the comment section about that, feel free or link us to something. Um, so yeah, with anxiety, obviously, sometimes it can really manifest in physical sensations. So in terms of those real kind of the stomach knots with sweats, with like clammy palms. And then we almost like, learn to respond in that way um, and then often we can get triggers in different situations without really knowing that we've been triggered so I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you will start to really notice a physical symptom of anxiety but haven't really realized why you're feeling anxious so that is one of the reasons for that is just because obviously your your brain's working and sometimes you often have like everyone has a narrative in, in their brain and we it's often done subconsciously. So when we have that narrative, when we have things going around in our brain, I think we have up to like 70,000 thoughts a day. And really, if you think about the amount of thoughts that you have, how many of those are you actually conscious of? Um, I can't remember the percentage, but I think that you only notice about 25% of those thoughts, or not even that. Um, and obviously depending on what you're doing, if you're in more anxiety provoking situations, you've got that narrative going on in your mind anyway, and then that anxiety then comes and then obviously it stays, if you don't really do anything about it. So that's kind of um, a question for how it keeps um, how it keeps going. It's a really long winded answer, but I hope I answered it. Okay, it's a theory of memory, so yeah. Okay, yeah. So as I said, like with the, the genetics of anxiety any sort of mental health it's not to say that just because your parent experienced mental health that you're going to um when i say mental health i mean like mental health difficulties but because that we do have those predispositions predispositions to it it can be more likely to come out in us but obviously we're triggered by certain things or we have certain experiences that make us feel more anxious i've got another question that just popped up so, in terms of how do you deal with anger issues? I think with anger, people don't often... Really, anger is a really, really natural emotion. And it's not that feeling anger is a bad thing. It's obviously what we do with that anger. Um, and something that people don't often know is anger is actually a secondary emotion. So, when you feel anger, you're generally feeling another emotion. So often, stereotypically, for males, behind anger there can be sadness. Um, obviously that's the same for all genders, but stereotypically in men that is what is behind anger. So when you feel angry, it's about really being curious to why you're actually anger, angry. So really trying to unpick it, notice what situations make you angry, notice what thoughts make you angry. Um, and then trying to work with it through that and then how you deal with it is again so once you've understand understood the root of where your angers come from you're going to be more able to deal with it and it's about 
being able to, as I said, unpick that anger, so really, really unpack it. So if it's the thoughts that are making you angry, so if, um, say an angry thought could be, I can't believe they've done that to me. So you've had that thought come off, saying I can't believe they've done that to me. Then that will trigger some other thoughts, kind of, well, how can I get them back? Or it could be just then you start putting all your anger into different situations. I don't know if anyone's ever been angry. You get in a car, then all of a sudden you've got road rage. So it's like anger filters from one area of your life so seamlessly into others before you even realise. But if it's the angry thoughts that are really, really bothering you, it's about counteracting that thought. So it could be that if you are angry at someone, really understand why are you angry at them. Is it something that you can have a conversation with? Is it something that you can then maybe deal with it with that person? Or is it something you have to deal with it by yourself? Um, and sometimes with anger, sometimes there's a lot of acceptance that has to come with that. Sometimes we can't change things. Like there's a lot of things going on in the world at the moment that makes me so angry. But it's a then that anger then fuels sometimes into really positive changes, really positive momentums, because you know that you can funnel and that anger into something that is going to be more powerful. But then you've got obviously other ways that anger kind of manifests itself and it comes out in ways that you really don't want to, perhaps in terms of even like punching walls, punching people, punching things, that if it is the real behaviour, then it's about, okay, what can I do about that? And it can be using alternative behaviours. So there's a, a thing from DBT, which is dialectical behavioural therapy, and that basically helps you to look at things on a spectrum. And with that, you really want to, if you feel really angry, you want to do the opposite emotion of that for you. So some people, anger will be happiness. So try listening to your favourite piece of music when you're angry and not allow your emotion to change. It's really quite difficult. But often when we feel angry, we listen to angry music, which then makes us more angry. Um, and as I said, like anger isn't necessarily always a bad thing. It's just the behaviour that comes with it. So in terms of dealing with it, it's really understanding where it comes from, understanding if it's that if it's the anger that we're bothered with or if it's the emotion behind it, so the sadness, the frustration. And then looking at the behaviour, is my anger then being channelled into something that's really helpful or unhelpful? And then being able to manage it that way. So, yeah, I hope, again, I've gone on a really long-winded answer, but because it's such a wide spectrum, I think people automatically hear anger and think that it's going to be really negative when it doesn't have to be. Um... If you look at sports, sometimes you have to be really angry to be able to play a sport well. Um, so, yeah, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just looking at it and understanding where it comes from for you. Right. Wow. Ooh. Yes, dialectical behaviour therapy. So, um, it actually is an offshoot of... Well, CBT therapists selfishly will say it's an offshoot from CBT, but it's its own therapy in its own right. There are a lot of similarities, so you have emotional regulation, you have distress tolerance, and you have mindfulness. Um, and it's about yeah, being able to better re regulate emotions, be able to tolerate distress. So say, again, if you're really angry, um, so again, using the opposite emotion. So sometimes when you're in a really heightened state of emotion, um, one of the tricks is to dive your face into cold water mainly like you want to do it just above your ears because then that basically makes your body think that you're diving into water so when it then will create a dive response in your body so your body then completely changes its makeup what it's doing so if you're feeling angry so you put your face into cold water just so it gets into your ears also you don't hold yourself for there for long maybe 10 seconds and that is enough for your body to then um release the dive response so then all the energy and all the kind of the physical sensations that were going towards anger then change completely um, and then you're, you can then kind of take a few moments because sometimes obviously when we are feeling any real strong emotions generally our thoughts are racing so doing something like that really calms them down or again with really strong emotions doing some star jumps if you're able to because again, it's just, you want to change the chemicals that are going on in your body. And you don't always have to do something 
you can do quite straightforward things about challenging your thoughts, asking your thoughts um, what's evidence for that thought being real, what's evidence for that thought not being real, and then the alternative thought. Or you can do something really behaviourally. So as I said, with the dive response with the water, or the star jumps, or even putting ice cubes in your hands. Again, it's changing your body temperature, which then will change your, how your body's doing. So it will basically, it goes really, really back to like our primary part of the brain. So you have the old brain, which is like the part in the centre of your brain, and then the new brain, which goes outside of it. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a real geek for like neuropsychology and the neuroscience of the brain and how that obviously impacts on what we're doing. Oh, right. I've actually, oh, I've gone over half past. So really, I suppose if there's no one's got any questions to put them in the comments, but just really just to give some tips on managing your mental health. Hopefully, obviously, we are coming towards the end of the lockdown. Fingers crossed. Um, but there are still really, okay. Let me quickly finish that before I, I'll go on to answering that question. So, yeah, so you've still really got some time, as we've spoken about, focusing on what your needs are. If you want to bake more, bake more. If you want to do more yoga, do more yoga. If you want to sit and watch Netflix or the TV, then do that. That We don't know what's right or wrong to do in this moment. So really it's being curious to what your needs are and doing that. I think that's kind of really been, like, one of my main tips, people are coming to me and asking for therapy of how to actually manage this, but it's about really what do you need? Um, and really thinking about that, noticing the things when you do things and you feel good, keep doing that. Be aware of the things that don't make you feel good, and obviously then do less of them. Um, but then I think just general well-being, um, as we've spoken about yoga, yoga has changed my life for the better. I started practicing it like years ago, but it just, if I don't do yoga, then I can feel it in my body, like I know I haven't done it. Um, meditation is something that I I love as well, and using obviously some CBT techniques, but I think I've just been really focusing on self-care, making sure that I'm feeling well, and obviously looking after my friends and family. So I'm just quickly reading that comment. Okay, so I think, managing with other people's mental health I think it's just again having those open conversations with them um when I work with people you'd be surprised that when you ask people well, how are you actually getting through it and you, people don't actually communicate what the uh, what they want or even ask the other person and if we don't really ask someone what they need from us how are we going to know like not many of us have the skills of mind reading but what often that we need to just communicate, speak to them, ask them what it is that I can do to support you. But in saying that, you really still need to look after yourself. So you need to try and strike that balance. So if they need you to give you like time, that's great. They've been honest, so you know, they've said they need time. However, make sure that you're not giving so much of your time that you're then neglecting your needs. So it's again, it's finding that balance with what they need, but then also looking after yourself. Um, being able to speak to friends and family that you can trust and you feel that you can speak to about a situation um, and then even potentially obviously speaking to a professional if you feel that you need to do that so they're kind of the really things that you need to look at when you are helping other people with their mental health so communication getting them to seek support if they need it but then still looking after your own mental health in the meantime so yes I've gone over by five minutes. Hello to the people who have just joined us. Um, but um, yeah, I'm sorry, I've actually got yoga in a bit. So I am going to sign off, but I hope you guys have found it useful. Thank you so much to Laura and Samantha for joining me through this, and thank you to them for inviting me along as part of their trial week. So as we said at the beginning, they are doing a week's worth of yoga, some sound healing, meditation, loads of really really good classes so I've posted it on my story and I'll post it again but if you go over to them at Deep Yoga Beats you can see what their timetable is for this week you haven't really got anything to lose um, and obviously most of us 
arguably are still working from home or we've gone some sort of flexibility so hi Jessica so yeah I think that check them out if you want you've got nothing to lose see have a trial out and see what you can do um yes they commented in the there so if you look at in the comments deep yoga beats they're the ones to check out um but yes thank you everyone for joining in and thank you for your questions I've really really enjoyed it and I hope there's something that you can take away from it too um main thing as I said just look after yourself however you need to and if you do want any further kind of tips or techniques on how to manage your mental health in lockdown obviously I'm not a crisis line I'm not here 24 7 but drop me a message and I can hopefully then give you more tailored advice on how to manage your mental health as we hopefully come to the end of lockdown and back to some sort of normality so yeah thank you guys and See you later, Michelle, and good night.